you wouldn't have a guy doing multiple sets of 20 every single day on the squat and then expect him to go run. It's just ridiculous. So everything needs to be, I call it making a stew. You don't just throw a pound of everything into your crock pot and hope it tastes good. It's gotta be a pinch of this, five pounds of this, you know, three of these. And that's how all training is. This is again, this is again. Off, topic. off topic. This is off way off topic. Way off topic. Way off topic. Way off topic. I don't even know if we answered the fucking question. I don't even know what the question was. The question was, should uh, conditioning work ever be period periodized or planned? Or should we just go by feel? And this was a, uh, in the new book, I actually plan all the conditioning work. All of it's planned and it's goal oriented. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna run in the risk of just doing a bunch of shit and not understanding what's affecting what. And that's just a very, now riding a bike or walking on a treadmill is a little bit different. But if you're gonna go out and run or push the prowler or something, it's gotta be, you have to take account for, uh, take that into account in your training. For example, I don't think people realize when you push a prowler or drag a sled, at least heavy, it's essentially weight training. And if you don't, Right? It's, and it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tap your recovery. Yes. And the way that I, I talk, Dave talks about making it simple, I divide conditioning up into two categories, hard conditioning and easy. Hard conditioning is something that's a muscular effort and requires uh, exertion. Easy conditioning is, you know, farting around on the bike or whatever that really doesn't do anything. I mean, you may have a little bit of a drop off the first week, but for the most part, there's nothing. If it's hard conditioning, you have to plan for it. And the best way to give this example is, uh, you wouldn't have a guy doing multiple sets of 20 every single day on the squat and then expect him to go run. It's just ridiculous. So everything needs to be, I call it making a stew. You don't just throw a pound of everything into your crock pot and hope it tastes good. It's got to be a pinch of this, five pounds of this, you know, three of these. And that's how all training is. Even the assistance work, it's got to be within reason programmed and you've got to have some kind of leniency. I always give barriers, I should say, or, you know, right. But <clears throat> if you're, you know, if you're walking with the yoke or something, first of all, it's not really conditioning, No, <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But it even goes further than that. And you see how training, like I remember Louis, when you, uh, this, this is funny, the, uh, the first seminar that you and I did in Arizona, that was in Tucson, it was like the days in or something like that. And, uh, oh, God. Yeah, that was when we first, at least yeah, I first, first met Joe. Yeah, Joe-Kid. we'll come back to that one because there's, there's, there's the best that's seminar story. And it that's was the sec- definitely Arizona. That was the second time. Yeah. That was the second time that yeah. you're talking about. But I remember Dave saying, you know, you have to kind of redefine what you call a workout. Because everyone just kind of says if you bench, that's, you know. But let's say that <clears throat> on an off day, so to speak, you come in, you ride the bike or something. You do some mobility stuff. You do some stuff for your shoulder so you can get under the bar, stuff like that for the next day. That is a workout. Mm-hmm. Um, now, now I'm saying you need to program that, but everything you do has, uh, has a repercussion and it has to be accounted for. And it drives me fucking crazy when people don't understand that there's a price to pay for everything that you do. And there's a price to pay uh, if you're going through a divorce or you're moving or uh, you know, once you guys get uh, closer to finishing the thing, that's going to take an effect on your lifting. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. You have to program around that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know how we talked about uh, when you get older, focus on what you can and can't do. Mm-hmm. You know, focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. It's at those times where you have to focus on what you can do, get it done, and then get out. Because uh, you know, Buddy Morris always says, uh, "Stress is stress," and that's true. Yes. Um, so that's just something to consider. So yes, the answer is yes. I don't even know what GPP is anymore, but I'll tell you a funny story. Dave and I were coming back from a meet in Pennsylvania or something like that, or West, I don't know where it was. And it was fucking, it was Sunday night we drove back and it was quiet and Dave's like, uh, you know, uh, lifting weights is just GPP for football players, right? <laughs> and it was this holy shit moment uh, of what lifting is for an athlete. You know, it's just, a, it's a GPP. It's the shit they have to do. Yeah. You know, now for a lifter, it's a little bit different, but it was a eye opener of saying, it's just one piece of a big puzzle. It's actually, when you speak to a lot of strength coaches, it's one of the key indicators 
that they see. You know, if they have an athlete that just loves the weight room, they know here's a guy we need to dial back and start working more technical, yeah. specific field work with because there's an imbalance there. You know, the balance needs to be a little bit more. For my answer to the question is, obviously it's gonna be more technical. That's the difference between, you know, Jim and I is, you know, I like to focus on working with the top 1%, which is about two people. You know, he likes giving advice for the masses. So all conditioning to me is based upon what aerobic base you're gonna need for the sport that you're doing, if you're in a sport. And your aerobic base is going to impact not only your development as a player, but if you're completely an anaerobic athlete, like a power lifter, it's going to impact your recovery. A lot of power lifters take that for granted. Lighter power lifters probably won't have to do a whole lot because they still have an aerobic base from when they played sports as a kid or in high school or whatever. That's going to carry through for a certain period of time. The best example I can give of that are NFL players because they're all forced in college to have to train. And then when they go to the NFL, they're not forced to do that anymore. And anybody, not, not like they were. Yes. Anybody who's been around that environment knows the majority of them don't train that hard. It just so happens that the average NFL career is two to three years. Well, how long do you think it's going to take, if they're still playing sports, which they're doing, for that aerobic base to drop just enough to impact one step? Probably about two, three years. Um, that's a different example. For, for the power lifter, what happens is their, their lower back pumps start to increase. Their ability to recover <laughs> begins to decrease. All the things that we both went through begin to decrease. So instead of doing what we should have done, which would have been just waking up in the morning and walk around the block once, or hell, just to the stop sign and back if that's all you can do. Because your aerobic base sucks, it, it, it bottomed out. So when it bottoms out, that means your body's not processing nutrients. Yeah. You know, your blood's not circulating. If the blood doesn't circulate, the nutrients don't get to the muscle. The muscle doesn't repair from the damage. Your recovery thus increases. So or decreases. It decreases. Uh, so that aerobic base needs to be brought up. But it is once, the base of all fitness. Yes, exactly. So once it's brought up, depending upon the sport it really does there there's there's a point of diminishing returns and that's the same with anything with any sport even strength i'm that's sorry to say but that's the truth yeah um, again only you only have to do what is necessary yes exactly um <clears throat> now when you're dealing with just training for fitness and for yourself and there's your personal goals um that aerobic base still has to be in there somehow you know even at a minimal and that's going to impact your recovery and everything else and it doesn't have to be crazy and i usually steer people away from high intensity interval training uh yokes heavy sleds prowlers and stuff like that because i know they're not going to take the shit out of the weight training and mm -hmm. it goes back to what jim's talking about putting things in pulling things out if they want to start throwing in prowler work then take the squats out for a while something has to come out because your heart rate's just as high your the lactate the muscle damage everything else is going to be just as pretty much the same. Now you want to throw in walking around the street, really light sled drags, we're talking a different story. Take the curls out, but something has to come out for it to come back in. And this is a funny story because once I started to actually figure this out <laughs> after I was done powerlifting, yeah. you know, as we most do, you learn the most after you quit doing what you wanted to do. <clears throat> I was in an essence being a fake body or a pretend bodybuilder and was doing cardio to burn fat and it didn't take a whole lot to get in my heart rate zone yeah. which i think justin harris was helping it was like 107 because you're taking from it to like 110 yeah. I mean, it wasn't much i mean i get on the treadmill just walk and like <laughs> fuck you know and then I, I was walking at like 2.5 you know three miles per hour then over a period of time it's like fuck you know i'm on a 15 grade yeah, you know you going five miles an hour and i'm fucking huffing it and I actually, I had to see Serrano and I'm like, Eric, man, something's wrong. And he's like, what? And I'm explaining it. You know, I, I'm walking on the treadmill at 15 degrees and, you know, fuck, I got a damn near run and um, I can't get my heart rate up. And he looked at me and he called me a fucking idiot. That was his exact words. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why? And he, he said, you got in shape. Huh? That's what happened. And I'm like, son of a bitch, I need to cycle this. You know, otherwise I'm going to start running and I didn't want to, I don't want to run. Um, I, I hate running. 
Um, and now I got an excuse with a fake hip, so it's great. <laughs> um, but the <laughs> fact is, I just hate running. So that's when I kind of thought, you know, when the question asked about periodization, that's when I thought, well, at some point in time, if you're really pushing the conditioning, it's going to get to a point where it's going to be hard for it to become better. So how do you get something better that's already peaked? You got to bring it back down. That's just the same with strength training, same with anything else.